header, footer, and menu. I want to go over those things more in detail. I know in the overview I basically talked about them, but your header is the top of your site. This whole part is the header of your site, including your menu, uh, you know, the text that you're having up, and you can edit this text as well. Uh, so we're going to talk about editing the header, why it's important, and editing the editing the footer. Now these two things are very important because they need to be customized when you have a Wix site. They're going to say random things before you actually go ahead and customize it. So let's look at the menu first of all. So your menu, you want to make sure that you have pages that are customized. You might not want to book an event page or an about page. I recommend having a home, having an about page. And uh, I don't know, if you're an ice cream parlor, you can do your flavors. So what I recommend doing is just saying, hey, I want a page that talks about our history. It's called Our History or History. Uh, so Manage Menu, all you do again, you click the header. And your header might be located here or here or, you know, I mean your menu, actual menu on your header will be located somewhere at the top. Just click on it and hit Manage Menu. And then what you can do is actually go in here and individually see the pages by clicking so we can see the pages they're already made for us so we can go in and when we talk about editing paragraphs I'll show you how to edit these it's as simple as clicking but what you might want to do is change flavors into I don't know like let's say our history so yeah the history of you know either the company or how you got started our history so you can hit done let's look at the menu and now the menu says our history so you can change that for yourself. That's the beauty of selecting a template, not having to do it from scratch. But as you can see, these uh, these flavors look very nice. This is this is a really nice site. But in terms, if you're going to be doing your history, you may want to get rid of the ice cream flavors simply by hitting that and then deleting. So just again, hit this. And um, in order to delete it, as you can see here, you have to delete the full page from your site. So you go to the pages menu, hover over our history, and click the you know this icon, and then hit delete. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your pages menu. You're going to hit this, and you're going to have to hit delete. So that's actually going to completely remove it. And in that case, if you can't edit the page, that needs to be done sometimes. And see, that's why I wanted to actually take you over this to show you. Simply hit the menu again if you want to create the page. Manage menu and add page. And then you can go and create an Our History page. Done. As simple as that. Now you have an Our History page. It may be blank, but we can start designing that from scratch later. So let's navigate over to the menu and go back to our home. So we've taken a look at the menu. We see how it works. We have our header over here, and what you may want to do is actually import a logo. So if you want to do that, you hit Add, and then you would import uh, either image or vector art. So let's say vector art was your logo, or you can actually go to My Image Uploads. And you'll probably see stuff from my website here. But what you're going to do is um, simply go to upload images and upload your logo. And then you can drag that onto your site. Otherwise, we're just going to use an example using vector art. You would just use the vector art, delete this, drag the vector art up, make sure it's within the header. So click here, make sure the header the headers in this area. Keep that there. Go to preview. That's what your image would look like up there. Obviously, it doesn't look like the best. It's not an ice cream logo. Um, and then you hit publish. In this case, we don't want to do that, but that's what you would do if you wanted to import your very own logo. And that makes it simple. You don't need to know any you know, development or coding. Or it's, it's very easy. So let's look at our footer. So the footer is often going to say your copyright. So who owns the website? Probably created by who? I have other websites. And when you link other websites, it's good for SEO. It's good for backlinking. So what I'll actually do is I'll write the year it was created in. And I'll actually put my personal website. So 2018 by Nader Nader Najad. And then proudly created or I'd even write like visit NaderNajad.com. As simple as that. Visit NaderNajad.com. I'll highlight this. 
I'll hit the link button. Again, I'm going to show you. I've removed the previous copyright and the lit, the Wix credit. I've added my other website. I'm going to highlight this, and this menu is going to pop up for text settings. I'm going to hit link, and I'm actually going to go down to instead of anchor web address, and I'm going to type in my other website. Now, you might want to type in your social media, but if you have another website, it's a great way to generate backlinks for that site. So this site is going to be connected to that site. Google's going to see it as higher authority. So it was created in 2018 by Not or Not or Najad. Visit notornajad.com. Contact, I'll update my contact info here, address here, hours here, and mailing list. If this is in your footer, you need to click it, hit settings, and then go ahead and to actually manage your email. This is going to allow people to actually message you. It's located in settings on Get Wix subscribers and where notifications should be sent. You're gonna actually edit that here. So this is gonna be editing your contact form, the sign up form, and you can get email subscribers that you can notify about new developments, new deals, new offers. It's a great way to make more money at your business and get clients coming back. So that's a very general overview. One last tip I want to leave you with is make sure the address, contact, and hours, make sure they reflect. If you have a Google business, make sure they reflect the same thing. A Google My Business is basically when you go to Google and you set up your business there. You know, you Google a business and it pops up like your local ice cream shop. Make sure if you're on Google My Business, your address, your contact, your hours, they all match. It'll give you higher search ranking. Uh, you know, it's better for SEO. So those are my tips. I don't want to make this too long, but that's an overview of the first place you should start. Edit those two things. Most people do them last, but it's best to edit those first. So we'll see you in the next lesson.